So this video is going to cover the effector mechanisms of, or effector functions of CD4 positive helper T cells, as well as cover why T cells turn into or differentiate into specific types of effector helper T cells. So right now we're looking at a naive CD4 positive T cell. So these cells are wandering the lymph nodes or other secondary lymphoid tissues using their T cell receptor alpha and beta pro proteins to check for peptides that might interact strongly with them. And so here we see a professional antigen presenting cell in the lymph node, which could be a macrophage, a dendritic cell, or a B cell. So it's uh, taken in a uh, pathogen and it's presenting a piece of that pathogen, a peptide on its MHC class two. And if the protein-protein interactions occur strongly between these two cells, including the interaction between the alpha and beta chain of the T cell receptor binding strongly to the MHC molecule and the peptide, and the CD4 protein interacting with the MHC2 molecule, the CD28 protein on the surface of T cells interacting with the B7 molecule on the surface of the professional antigen presenting cell, if this interaction occurs, then this naive, cell, naive uh, T cell will become an activated T cell. And we covered T cell activation in the previous video. Now what's going to happen? Well, this T cell will differentiate into its effector T cell. Um, now, differentiate means, just means turn into um, a certain type of cell. And there are a number of different effector CD4 T cells. And their names are Th1, Th2, Th17, Tfh, and Treg, or T-regulatory. So these are just different effector uh, T cells. They're going to ha each have a different job, and T cells uh, undergo differentiation into specific lineages because the immune system says, hey, you know what, we really need to fight a parasitic infection, or we really need to activate our B cells. So we'll cover in the next few slides how does a T cell know to turn into one of these cells? And once it turns into one of those cells, how does that cell help um, combat a, an infection? Uh, the answer is going to be cytokines, right? Cytokines are molecules used for cell-to-cell -cell communication. When one cell wants to tell another cell what to do, cytokines, which are these small proteins, are released from one cell bind cytokine receptors on the surface of the target cell, and that changes the gene expression inside that cell, so that cell will now make some proteins and have some function. So let's start with Th1 uh, effector T cells. So if a CD4 positive helper T cell differentiates into a Th1 cell, it's because the immune system has recognized that there's either a viral or a bacterial infection and that macrophages are essential for combating that infection. So we need to help macrophages do their jobs, uh, which is phagocytosis and inducing inflammation. And there's actually a later video that covers in more detail the effector mechanism of Th1 helper T cells. So we'll cover, we'll go into more detail in a later video. So how does a CD4 T cell, a naive one, know to turn into a Th1 cell? And the answer is cytokines released from dendritic cells and macrophages in the lymph node. So the cytokine is IL-12, as well as um, cytokine released by uh, natural killer cells called interferon gamma. So if a CD4 positive naive T cells become activated because of the, what happened on the last slide, and it's exposed to one or both of these two cytokines, this CD4 T cell undergoes mitosis because of IL-2 release. Um, it's going to turn into a Th1 cell, and then it will travel into the infected tissues and help a macrophage do its job better, like I said, which will be covered in a later video. Um, so cytokines induce the T cell to turn into a Th1 cell. Um, the, uh, the cytokines can come from other cells, but they could also come from the helper T cell itself. So when, macro, when CD4 cells get hit with IL-12 and or interferon, that can actually cause those cells to make interferon gamma themselves, which will come back and act in a autocrine manner. So 
uh, cytokines and other signaling molecules can act either paracrine when one cell releases a molecule that targets another cell or autocrine when one cell releases a cytokine or signaling molecule comes back to that cell and signals to that cell. So that's almost like a positive feedback loop. So if CD4 cells get these cytokine signals, they will differentiate into Th1 cells and that function, that effector function, is to go help macrophages do their job. And we'll go in more detail into a later video of that. All right, if a CD4 T cell differentiates into a Th2 helper T cell, that cell is going to help combat parasitic infections and help activate eosinophils, mast cells, and basophils. And the way it's going to do this is it's going to help stimulate B cells to isotype switch to make IgE. IgE um, helps activate basophils, mast cells, and eosinophils. It helps them recognize parasitic infection using the IgE molecule and FC epsilon receptors. We're actually going to cover that in the later video in the next unit. Uh, but suffice it to say, if the immune system decides, hey, we really need to fight a parasitic infection, we really need IgE, then CD4 helper T cells will turn into or differentiate into Th2 cells. And then that will trigger B cells to isotype switch to IgE, and IgE will help trigger eosinophils, mast cells, and basophils to recognize the infection and help attack parasites. Why do T cells turn into uh, TH2 cells? Well, it's because they're exposed to cytokines such as IL-4, and it's not clear what the source of IL-4 is to cause this differentiation. It, scientists believe it could be basophils. They could be, basophils could be recognizing a parasite using other receptors and then releasing IL-4, which will go to CD4 cells, trigger them to release their own CD4, I'm sorry, IL-4, uh, along with IL-5, and this will trigger cells, CD4 cells, to differentiate into TH2 cells, which again, like I said, uh, instruct the immune system to make IgE. Okay, so that's uh, two. Let's go for a third. Uh, TH17 helper T cells. So the function of these cells is to help neutrophils. So if the immune system says, you know what, we really need neutrophils to fight this infection or fight this pathogen, then CD4 T cells will turn into TH17 cells, differentiate into them. And how do these cells work to help neutrophils? Well, they will secrete a cytokine called IL-17. So that's why they're called TH17 cells. And IL-17 uh, triggers endothelial cells, right, those cells that line the blood vessels, to release the chemokine CXCL8 along with other cytokines and along with other changes in the blood vessels that trigger neutrophil uh, extravasion. So we covered um, in the first unit the idea that neutrophils are swimming by in, in uh, tissue and they're not going to stop and enter the tissue unless the tissues are inflamed. And that uh, inflammation triggers changes in endothelial tissue, endothelial cells. So the cells get uh, adhesion molecules on them, chemokines such as CL8, CXCL8, attract neutrophils. And it turns out that CD4 um, uh, cells that become uh, TH17 cells uh, release IL-17 in, in the inflamed tissues and that increases the ability of neutrophils to enter inflamed tissues. So helps with neutrophil extravasion. Okay, um, how does this uh, occur? Uh, IL-16 and TGF-beta are believed to be the cytokines that trigger the differentiation to TH17 cells. It is unclear the source of these cytokines. Some cell must release them. It's, well, scientists aren't sure which cells they are. Um, when cytokines uh, like these hit the CD4 naive T cell, uh, that causes the T cell to release IL-21, which can act in an autocrine manner, which can help the differentiation to TH17 cells. Uh, second to last one, or fourth one, uh, TFH cells, which stand for T follicular helper cells, uh, because these are going to stay in the follicles of the lymph node uh, 
and their job is going to be activating B cells. So when we covered B cell activation, we learned about the thymus dependent and thymus independent B cell activation. These are the helper T cells that help activate B cells in a thymic, thymic dependent manner. And we're actually going to have a whole separate video on the way that B cells function to stimulate B cells to activate an isotype switch. It is believed that uh, these cells uh, differentiate because of the cytokine IL-6, which we learned back in Unit 1 is an uh, inflammatory cytokine released by macrophages. And so now IL-6 has a new role to trigger uh, CD4-positive naive T cells to differentiate into TFH cells. Uh, I just do want to note that there's a typo in the table in Figure 418. I believe it has some of these cytokines uh, in the wrong column. All right, the last uh, type of uh, CD4 positive T cell we'll talk about are regulatory T cells uh, or Treg cells. Their function is, their effector function is to suppress the immune response or shut down the immune response. So that's interesting because all the other T cells uh, activate the immune response. So these are self peptide binding T cells. And so if you recall back in uh, the chapter we talked about T cell development, we talked about not wanting T cells to recognize self-peptides. But these are a class of T cells that do recognize self-peptides, and they suppress the immune response. Uh, it is not clear why T cells differentiate into these. It's not clear how these T cells um, are activated or um, are allowed to, to escape the thymus. But suffice it to say, we do know a few things about regulatory T cells, uh, that they're CD4 positive cells. They're also CD25 positive. So a CD25 is a protein present on the surface of these cells and found, not believed to be found in other types of T cells. So if a cell uh, has CD25 on its surface and CD4 on its surface, it is uh, most likely a regulatory T cell. And these cells function because they have a T cell receptor that binds and recognizes self-peptide. Now, we don't want to attack cells that are presenting self. And in fact, this, this recognition um, will cause these cells to release cytokines that actually suppress the immune response. Um, and they suppress T cell immune response. They suppress dendritic cells. Um, again, these are newly discovered T cells, newly studied T cells. So we don't know a whole lot about them, but we do know that, we do know that they are important. Um, in controlling the immune system.